Hello. Is it not interesting that uh, when we fail to face the truth, it tends to haunt us for the rest of our lives, no matter how hard and how successfully we strive to cover it up? I'm Charles Aruka, and you're welcome to another edition of Politics Today, live on Channels Television. Now, it's about uh, seven months since the bribery scandal involving the former chairman, House of Representatives, ad hoc committee probing the fuel subsidy fraud. Farouk Lawan hit the headlines. The sound and fury that trailed the event may have died down, but another storm is brewing, indicating that the issue will not just go away. Well, it's back here with us today, and tonight we'll be discussing the commitment of activist and lawyer Festus Kayamu to prosecute Honorable Lawan. But this last week, President Goodluck Jonathan granted Christiana Manpour of the CNN an interview from Davos, Switzerland. On the state of the nation, he spoke on a wide range of issues, from insecurity to power supply, from the economy to corruption, and much more. Now, ahead of the discussion of how these issues actually affect the lives of ordinary Nigerians, let's take a listen to the report from that interview. The economic and political stability of Nigeria, West Africa, and indeed the African continent depends majorly on security and good governance. And the World Economic Forum holding in Davos, Switzerland, provides a platform for world leaders to share their problems and challenges with the rest of the world for possible solution. One of such leaders attending the forum is Nigeria's president, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, who in an interview with CNN's Christian Mampo debunks claims that his government is overwhelmed by the activities of the terrorist group Boko Haram. Boko Haram is not uh, as a result of misrule, definitely not. And sometimes people feel that it's a result of poverty, definitely not. Boko Haram is a local terror group, and we call on the rest of the world to work with us. Because now we are talking about Algeria, we are talking about northern Mali. And our belief is that if you allow terror to exist in any part of the world, it will not just affect that country or that state, but it will affect the rest of the globe. And we should not play politics with Boko Haram. On the issue of power, President Jonathan insists that the reforms in the sector is yielding results. We have not got to where we should be, and of course you know the power infrastructure is uh, one investment that you must complete the chain before the, the, the bulb can light. You must generate, you must transmit, you must distribute. And even if you have the money and the political will to do so, you cannot do it overnight. And we're working very hard. And I promise you that before the end of this year, power will be really reasonably stable in Nigeria. This is something that has been a problem for years, for years. So you cannot correct it overnight. It takes time, even if you have the money. The president also spared a moment to speak on corruption and crude oil theft, all of which he described as inimical to the development of Nigeria, saying the nation needs the assistance of the international community to deal with these twin evils. Frankly speaking, we want uh, the international community to support Nigeria, because this stolen crude it's been bought by refineries abroad, and they know the crude oil was stolen. The world must condemn what is wrong. The stolen crude is refined abroad. It's not refined in Nigeria. And Apart from checkmating the Boko Haram sect in Nigeria, President Jonathan also made a case for African leaders to devise a means of dealing with the activities of terrorist groups in Algeria and Mali before it spins out of control. Well, that was uh, the report that captured the essence of President Jonathan's discussion with Christian Amanpour of the CNN. But joining me tonight to discuss the key points of President Jonathan's interview is a constitutional lawyer and public affairs analyst, Barrister Onyekachi Obani. Well, thanks for joining us on the program uh, today. Nice to have you with us. Thank you, Charles. Good evening. Well, Barrister Obani, you did listen to that report and particularly to the issues that the president raised in uh, his interview there. Now, of, um, I think the matter that touches the lives of Nigerians, aside from the issue of security, is that of power supply. So I think we'll start from uh, that uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. Well, he did mention some issues that no matter how much money we have, 
the problem of power supply will not be solved in one night. Okay, he said overnight. Now, it's been on for 30 years, and don't you think uh, this administration has actually made an honest attempt to change the situation for the better? Well, uh, my comment uh, with respect to the issue of uh, the energy sector is issue of lack of clarity as to the government policy uh, concerning energy. Uh, there was a time uh, they were talking about allowing the private uh, individuals, the private sector to come into that sector uh, in terms of distribution. Uh, I don't know how far they have gone because there was a roadmap. Are they really following strictly the issue of the roadmap that was unveiled, that was two years ago by this uh, present administration? Because if you are still allowing a uh, private sector to come in, then why are we talking about borrowing $178 million this year in order to add additional 3,000 megawatts? That is what uh, uh, the minister, uh, Marco, said you know, recently, that the government will be borrowing $178 million in order to inject additional 3,000 uh, megawatts. Well, perhaps, so, I mean, if the private sector should come in, they would, I mean, they, they, they just wouldn't come in to take over a sector that's already in shambles. I mean, mm -hmm. they have to repair it to a certain extent before private participants can put their money in it. Don't you think so? That's what they told us when uh, PSEN also increased uh, the tariff. Remember, it was uh, done uh, last year uh, that we need to ensure that Nigerians pay higher uh, in order to allow private uh, sector to come in, that they cannot come into a sector that is clearly in shambles, uh, a sector that, you know, things are not in order. That was the reason. And they went ahead and increased. And today, I mean, I pay almost 20-something thousand <laughs> average every month. <laughs> well, and per what perhaps the increase in tariff yes. has not been enough. Maybe the money generated from the increase, uh, increase in tariffs is not enough, so they have to augment from somewhere else. No, what we're saying is that you have a timeline within which you, you want to implement this roadmap. We want to know at what point are the private sector coming in and what is the level of participation by the private sector. These things have to be clearly spelled out. And then if uh, our president was saying that almost, uh, almost everywhere in Lagos and in Abuja, everyone now has constant light, then I think it's a different Nigeria he's referring to because 90% of Nigerians are, enjoying, are not enjoying any light anywhere. I just came back from my village. I mean, during December, I went to my village, you know, in Awumuku, in Ikuano. Local government council in Abia State. I didn't see any light was there. Throughout my stay, it was generator that I used. Here, right here in Lagos, where I stay, I am as I'm speaking to you now, and God knows this thing. My my family is watching this program through generator. So what are we talking about? All over. A lot of people watch program this program through generator. So when you say even on the streets of Abuja and Lagos, that everyone is saying that there's constant light and all that, then I'm I, I am wondering because I know in Asoro that is constant light. That may not necessarily be a reflection of the reality on ground. But so has Asoro it, cannot uh, be Lagos. There actually yeah. been any yeah. period where there's been no uh, constant electricity in Asoro? Yeah, there is. <laughs> there is. There is constant light there because. Uh, uh, you look at the budget every year, there is, you know, there is certain amount of money budgeted for fueling and for generator services and all that. We all have all that. I mean, you go through the budget every year. It's, there, it's constant. So maybe there is a difference between Abuja and then Asoro, between Lagos and Abuja, I mean Asoro. So if there is constant light there, then it cannot be a reflection of the reality on ground. Many Nigerians are still, you know, uh, wallowing in, you know, in with hot, this hot weather. They sleep without any light whatsoever. I mean, two days ago, it was so serious for me. Honestly, I had to practically lie on the ground in order to, you know, you know, get a sleep. So all over the country, the same thing. In all the local governments, in all the... So Ab Lagos is not only Abuja and Lagos in the, in the first place. Nigeria is not only Abuja and Lake. There are other places that don't even have light. They, don't, they have not even seen electricity since God said, let there be heaven. So what are we talking about? So it's issue of having a clearer picture as to government policy on the energy sector. If government is actually hansing off completely and all that, let us know who and who are coming in. Who are they selling these things to? Because there are names that were touted as having bought some of this, you know, uh, yeah. they, of course, IBB and all that. They mentioned it. I don't know how true is that. Now, if those guys have bought these things, what, are, what is going on? Are they still in interested in carrying out those reforms that we are talking about because an average Nigerian actually wants light. This country can only make progress if you have constant light. Nigerians are hardworking people. They, they want to work, but they don't have any light. The infrastructure is not there. The, the industries that are supposed to come in here are leaving the country because there is no light. You keep on spending billions and billions of naira in order for you to you know, remain you know, uh, this in your production line. And there is no way you can call, you know, do that and then make even pay salaries and still make profit and remain in the country. So well, if we fix that sector, I tell you Nigeria is going to be on the, on the rise to